All right, so welcome back, students. Let's continue our discussion here. Uh, the question before us today is to look at how temperature and kinetic energy are related. And so remember here, when we talk about temperature, there's several ways that we can actually look at this. Degrees Celsius, we can look at degrees Fahrenheit, and then the most common one that we're going to use in this course here is the Kelvin, uh, because that's a little bit more relative to what we're really doing uh, uh, in terms of our particle movements and whatnot. Okay. Uh, now, keep in mind that when, whenever we talk about temperature, though, temperature is nothing, it, well, it is related here, this concept of temperature, which I'm just going to put as T, T here in any of these three, Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin, is related to energy, is the very first thing here. And so there is a relationship between the two. And so temperature then is essentially going to be a relationship between the amount of energy that is encapsulated in the particles within a particular system. And I think in the previous section here, uh, if we just do here, let's say that this here is a flame. And if I were to have some particles, and let's just put these particles like this above, the, the, uh, what's going to happen here with the flame is that the energy or the heat being released as a result of the combustion of the gas that's at this flame is going to cause an acceleration of the particles. Now keep in mind that each of these particles here uh, has a kinetic energy that is equal to one half times the mass times the velocity squared. So as we increase the temperature, what's going to wind up happening here is that the kinetic energy of the particles in this particular substance in blue is also going to increase. So temperature is how we do that because as a result of the kinetic energy increasing for a particular particle, that means that they're going to move faster. So lighter gases or lighter particles are going to move faster than bigger particles or bigger gases. And that's just a matter of Graham's law interpretation here. But the idea is that as you increase the uh, kinetic energy, resulting from a flame or resulting from an increase in temperature, then that means that those particles then absorb that heat transfer or that energy transfer, and then they're able to move a lot quicker through the medium that they're in. So it increases the motion of those particles. The other idea that, idea that we need to look at here is how does this kinetic energy vary between various uh, particles? And so we've got four of them here. And so let's just label them here as one, two, three, and four. And what I'll do also is I'm going to essentially set this little yellow dot as the center point just for the sake of discussion. But what I'm trying to do here is to show you that there is a distance ratio between all of these. So if I look at the distance here, we can say that this is the distance of particle one, and the same thing here for this section here, this would be D2, and if I look at the distance here, this would be D3, so let's kind of put that there, and then the same thing here for this one, and that would be here D4. In other words, the distance. So if we look at this here, and we were to able to measure that out, we would see here that D2 is actually smaller than the distance of D1, and D1 is actually smaller than the distance of D4, and D4 is smaller than the distance of D3. So the idea here is, relative to how far a particle is away from a heat source, then that means that those particles then would be able to absorb more energy because of the relative distance closer to that source of energy than, say, other particles that are further away. So the idea here is not only as temperature increases are we going to increase the kinetic energy. So as temperature increases, we see that there's a relationship of kinetic energy increasing. What we also need to take into account here is that the distance of particles in a space, a three-dimensional space, also is going to impact the rate at which this occurs. And so it's very important that we kind of look at this. So the idea is that when we increase the kinetic energy of the particle, it will begin to move at a faster rate. And if it's an enclosed system, it will bounce off the walls, but it will increase that energy. Since we already know that gases in a, in a system are not going to have any transfer of energy because the collisions are intended to be or assumed to be elastic, the, the most 
the, the kinetic energy is mostly coming from the transfer of energy at the point of impact with a heat source or with a container that is heated from an outside uh, perspective or from an outside point. So then just to finish the thought here, then we would say that D2 here would have the highest absorption of heat and D3 would have the lowest uh, absorption of heat only because of the distance. But overall though, uh, what this allows us to do then is to kind of see, well, wait a second. Since one, like D3 is further away than D1, for example, and D2, well, what's, what's gonna happen here? How do we know uh, whether they're all gonna absorb kinetic energy and at what rate? Well, since D2 is the closest, it will absorb the energy the highest and D3 is the furthest, so it will absorb the kinetic energy the lowest. And what that means, though, is that if we were to plot these, we can see that the uh, the distance, if all particles are a certain distance away from the heat source, we can start to see that there is a absorption gradient between the particles, which then allows us to see that it's not a singular all particles are traveling at the same kinetic energy because they're not all in close proximity to the heat source. And so because of that, you are going to get a distribution of uh, kinetic energies among the particles. And what you'll see here, if I were to draw this out, uh, you, you'll see here, instead of having something that is very singular like this in terms of distribution, what you'll find here is because we have many particles, you'll tend to find that the distribution then uh, becomes a little bit more spread out. And this typically happens as we increase temperature in the uh, right direction here. And so if we look at this in terms of kinetic energy, the kinetic energy here uh, will increase as you increase the temperature overall. And so the idea is that uh, in a container where you have a lot of uh, particles, the, there will be a distribution of kinetic energies among the group overall. So uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and cut it there for, for this video. Uh, but if you haven't already done so, please subscribe, keep learning, watch the videos, and we'll see you in the next one.